What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. It is currently the first part of November. So, bring me the fat man. Alright guys, what it really means is that people are going to start wanting things from us. Either to, to purchase for someone else or for us to give to them. You know what I'm talking about. Crack cocaine. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm talking about presents. Presents, man. Presents. Jeez. Read the room. So my next couple of videos are going to be simple gifts to make. So what I did, and this is pro tip number one. I'm calling it number one, but it's probably going to be the only pro tip in this video. Maybe not. When you go to your local hardwood dealer, always check the scrap bin first because that wood is gonna be more discounted and so you can get some nice species of wood for a discounted amount of dollars and cents, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking ducats, greenbacks, a little shang shang, if you know what I mean. So what I did is I went in, I checked the bins, I got all of this lumber right here. I've gone over it in my stories a little bit. You'll see pieces of it in the next few videos. But all of this lumber right here, I got for like 115 bucks. I'm gonna be able to get like at least six projects out of that. I'm, I actually was calculating it up and I think I'm kind of more like 10. And that's pretty damn good for like 115 bucks. So pro tip, off cut spin. Now when I went there, I had specific ideas for projects and specific woods I wanted. But I came across this piece of lumber in particular that just looks so awesome, I had to buy it even though I had no idea what I was going to do with it. This is Wingate. Check that out. That is flipping amazing. Now I've seen Wingate before, I've not seen it with this much grain patterning and everything. I just, so I fell in love with it. I got it home and I was like, what am I going to make? And then I realized that I need one of those little valet things that you throw your keys and your change and stuff on your dresser because my dresser is just a mess of crap that leaves my pockets. But this is build that build. So I figure I'm gonna go along with this great grain pattern and I'm going to, I'm gonna cut me off a piece and then I'm gonna cut like one or two lines in here. I'm thinking wavy lines. Uh, I'm gonna spread it out a little bit and pour epoxy in there and then carve the whole thing. So it'll be a little, a little funky. A little funky, if you know what I'm saying. All right, here's what we're gonna do now, right now. We're gonna whack us off a piece. I'm thinking about 12 inches. I'm going to do the two squiggly lines, maybe one squiggly line, we'll, 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 we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, and then I'm gonna take this upstairs and try to figure out a mold for this. What I would like to do is not build a mold. What I would like to do is figure out a way to construct something or use some things that I already have to uh, to build a mold around it because it's 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 not going to be a, a huge pour it's not going to be a deep pour we'll figure something out also I've been told that the splinter is like a son of a bitch yay <clears throat> okay I kind of cannibalized an old mold and the reason I didn't show it is because I wouldn't suggest doing it this way um, I got MDF but I got I, I got half inch MDF and it splits really bad. When you screw into it, so if you're gonna do, if you're gonna make a mold with MDF, I would go three quarters inch, um, or if you can find melamine, I everybody seems to be able to find melamine at the big box stores. I can never find it. Uh, I'm, I must be looking in the wrong place. I don't know. But now that we get the mold, what I'm gonna do is I'm also out of Tyvek tape, but I've been told that packing tape works just as well. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do all the corners in here uh, because I'm not gonna use any caulk. I'm not gonna use any cack. So uh, um, I just want to make sure that I don't have any leak through on the corners. And then we're going to try something. This is a horrible idea. Um, I've seen people before where they'll take a piece of tape. They take a piece of like painter's tape and they put it on the back of this. They put a piece of tape down here and then they super glue those to each other and it's supposed to hold it down. I've also heard hot glue works. Anytime I've ever done this, I've had to like clamp it down, but I'd rather not clamp this. I don't have a really good way to clamp it, so we're gonna try that. Hopefully, we do not fail. All 
All right, guys, I'm scrapping the CA glue and the tape thing. I don't trust it. I feel like somehow the epoxy is gonna make the tape adhere or something weird. So we're just gonna do, I've been told that you can do hot glue and you can use that to dam everything up and whatnot. What you may have noticed when I made my mold is there are some gaps kind of around it. I would be more concerned about that, but what I noticed when I started uh, taking a look at this stuff, and I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it very well on camera, but there's just like little tiny kind of cracks in this stuff already. Like it's just got, has these little tiny voids for lack of a better term. So I think what we're gonna do is end up, we're gonna end up like kind of almost flooding this whole thing with epoxy to make sure that we fill all those voids too. Because, because if I can fill all those voids, then when I carve it, it might not splinter as much. I also think since it's a dense wood and it's like a pine or something that, um, uh, this will allow me to skip doing a penetrating epoxy step. I could be completely wrong. So here we are, um, I, uh, I messed up, man, I messed up. Uh, I was, and this uh, rookie mistake, not even a rookie mistake, I know better and I did it. I was, it was time for me to stop, but I was kind of into the project, right? So I, I kept going when I knew that I didn't have enough time to get done what I wanted to get done, and as a result, I slipped and I jacked something up. So if you can see right here, I was carving along fine, and then I just brought the, a router out, and the router slipped a little bit and ran right into to my, my wall here, whatever you call it. So, I guess the first takeaway from that is always obey your own rules, because my thing is, like at four o'clock, I know I need to stop because I need to get the shop cleaned up, jump in the shower and then go get the kids. It was it was past four o'clock when I even started on this little adventure right here. This is not completely jacked yet, which is good because like, you know, it's, it's a nice piece of wing I really don't wanna mess it up. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is bringing this compartment all the way over. I feel like I'm not focused, okay. Because I think if I try to come up from this indent and come all the way up, I think the wing gate will handle it, but I have a feeling once I get to the epoxy, I have a feeling that's just gonna blow out anyway. So we're just gonna take this, this center section out, make this one big key, uh, place, and this and this a separate deal. And I mean, it's still gonna function the same way, and sometimes you gotta like roll with the punches when stuff like this happens. But now, ironically enough, I also talked about this on the podcast, um, <laughs> I hate I hate jigs. I hate making jigs. But in order to, to maintain a good guideline, now that I'm so far down here, like any like I'm almost in a no man's land. If I get it much more into here, that's going to be bad. So I'm going to have to build myself some sort of jig to uh, to run the router just straight across here and make sure that that it doesn't pull me out of straight.
All right, I really hate to call it on a project, but <laughs> two things. One, oh, wow, man, it just grabbed into that. I don't know what happened there. Uh, one, I don't know exactly when this got so weird and not like and thin, but I noticed it was thin. I was hoping it would maintain itself. Not even thinking that when I went to route it, it would just cut right through it. So to me now, this is kind of done because I can't salvage this piece right here, right? I don't think. I think if I, I, think if I try to salvage just this part of the tray, it's gonna do the same thing. So, so sometimes you gotta know when to fold them, kids. Um, I think I'm folding it on this. Uh, what I will do is, um, I'm gonna make another one. <laughs> All right, guys. I know I said I was gonna give up on this, uh, but I did mention this in my stories on Instagram, and that's what I love about the maker community. Somebody said, hey man, what about like pouring a little epoxy in here and filling that up? And at first I was worried about it because I've got this super thin piece right here. Let's get there. See that? Like I, I already have cut way into this, but what I thought is what if I can just seal this off up to about here, pour epoxy down in there, not only fill this little piece here, but then there would just be a little, a little bit of epoxy that kind of matches the rest of the epoxy down here. So we're going to try that. What I am going to do though, just to be safe, just to be on the safe side is I do have some of this proving walnut left. So I'm going to lop off a piece of this and uh, when I'm pouring the epoxy for that valet, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one like I did the other one and do the same thing I did with that one uh, and see if we get better results carving this one. One eternity later. What's up guys? It is day 15 of this one day build. <laughs> uh, I don't know what day we're on. Uh, I started this project and it kind of went south on me and so I got some other stuff fixed first and now I'm back to it. But here we are with this valet that if you'll remember, I accidentally ate through with the router. I filled that air, that void with epoxy and now I'm gonna carve this out and hopefully get that looking okay again. I'm a little worried because these rails are very thin. Just to be safe, I went ahead and did another epoxy pour on this guy. I'm gonna run this through the planer, take the top and the bottom off and then I know I said that I really need to have like some sort of template for this, but I don't have the stuff around to make the template. I, I don't have a bushing that fits my router. I don't want to get the big router out. It seems like overkill. So I am probably going to try to do this by hand again using uh, kind of a railing system over there. That may be the worst idea ever, uh, but uh, I'm doing it anyway because the dude won't. And then I think I'm going to carve this with a... Uh, I think I'm gonna carve this in my shaping discs. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do for for this valet, I'm just gonna come in with my Dremel and uh, upcut bit, and hopefully I can control it well enough to just carve this out. It seems pointless to try to, to make some sort of jig or railing system just to get this little piece out, and since it's epoxy, I think I can carve it out pretty well. Probably famous last words, but uh, we're gonna see if that's gonna work. I've got a little bit more control over this. It doesn't take as big of a bite. Um, so we're gonna try that first. All right, so I went ahead and kind of wetted this down just to kind of get an idea what it's gonna look like. There's definitely some flaws, but uh, overall, I'm, I think we kind of like saved it with the epoxy here. Uh, once this dries, we're gonna see if the grain rises. If it rises, I will sand it down again, and then we'll get some finish on it. But now let's get to the other. And that 
ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a catastrophic failure. <laughs> I, uh, I can't fix this. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that crack right there? It runs all the way down there. So I think somehow the rotor tool got into that and just split it because this is what we got. So, I mean, I can't, I've been looking at this, I can't glue it. I would have to, I would have to start over from scratch and that's just not happening. Now, luckily, we redeemed ourselves on this guy. I think this guy looks pretty good. So, we're gonna go ahead and finish this. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to cut a video out of this. <laughs> guys and that is it here we are it's not perfect but I dig it uh, I think it covered the issues I had with it in the video I know this video is gonna be long so I don't want to I don't want to talk a lot at the end so my takeaway is I would make some sort of jig to to do this <laughs> um, but thanks for hanging out thanks for playing and speaking of thanks I'd like to say thanks to all my patreon members Put them down here. I can't remember if I put them over here yet. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. This definitely wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. Mm. Woo! I'd like to welcome to the fray, Chaz Thompson. Chaz, welcome to the fray. New patron, welcome aboard. And as always, a special thanks goes to Nick the Greek, Stephen Mann, Eric Easy E Weiss, Derek Coates, Caveman Ross, Chuck Faulkner, The Weekend DIYer, and Puffy Muffins. All right, guys, until next time, thanks for playing, and now I gotta get to work. Yoga swing. Believe me, if it was a sex swing, I would tell you. So that's like my kid's kitchen over there, man. Like, why would I put this there?